I'm getting a little bit nervous. I'm getting a little bit nervous. <laughs> Yes. Oh, thank you for uh, the correspondence. Uh, so you just you. Like to come in? Uh, I, I, I just uh, came from uh, the workshop, long term workshop, but I came to Canada oh, in June. Workshop over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were coming now. Yeah, well, 
Yeah, but I I only only I've only stayed in Canada for two months or so. Oh, okay, so yeah, that's your stay. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you can Okay. So we have. So uh, hi everyone. Uh, today we are really delighted to have Takato Mori, uh, a, a joint postdoc at PITP and YITP, to give us a talk. You know, um, on, on this quantum discord in holography and uh, Markov gap. Uh, so 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 Takato uh, finished his PhD from Sokendai University just recently, and he joined uh, Premier, uh recently and. Uh, uh, let's let's hear hear what what he has to you know. All right. Um, uh, thank you for introduction. Also, thank you for inviting me to University of Toronto. It was a beautiful city. Okay. Um. So today uh, I'd like to talk to you about uh, quantum discord, which is a uh, one of the measure for quantum correlations, in uh, and also it's surprising relation to a Markov gap. So this is based on the, my work in progress, which I'm writing the manuscript right now, hopefully it appears in this month, but yeah, it fluctuates a bit. <laughs> okay, so I know the audience includes uh, bus, uh, coming from a variety of uh, fields, including mathematics and quantum comput computation and also physics. So uh, first I'd like to review some of the aspects important aspects related to my research, uh, which is holography. And then I'd like to discuss discuss uh, what kind of things I obtained from the analysis on quantum discord in holography. So I hope um, I can talk about, I can briefly review about holography in 20 minutes, but well, uh, let's see. <laughs> And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask me anytime. Okay, so um, I, as a high energy physicist, um, what I really want to know about uh, is a quantum gravity. And th the reason we want to know, formulate quantum gravity is we know that uh, in the traditional formulation of gravity, which is known as uh, general relativity, I uh, abbreviate as a GR here. Um, it has been already known that GR breaks down at some point. So those points are known as a singularity. So there, there is a time singularity if you go back in time to the origin of our universe. And also we have uh, some space singularity if we go uh, to the center of the uh, black hole. So uh, at that, those kind of singularities, uh, general relativity breaks down. So we really need uh, quantum gravity there. And of course, there are several approaches to quantum gravity. And, but uh, there is one of the promising approach to uh, answer to the question of quantum gravity. This is known as the ADS CFT correspondence or holographic principle. And in this framework, we were able, uh, we can, uh, to some sense, um, answer the question of what is quantum gravity and how the uh, gravity geometry emerges. So um, let me briefly uh, explain what is ADS CFT correspondence. And this uh, subs subscript D plus one and D uh, represents the dimensions. So uh, we first start from uh, D plus one dimensional space-time manifold, uh, which we call bulk. And we particularly consider some uh, so-called asymptotical ADS space-time, anti-decitor space-time. And this manifold has some boundary, and this is uh, known as the asymptotic boundary. And this as asymptotic boundary is a Minkowski space-time. And this is also known as a boundary and this is, has a, a d-dimensional space time. And if you consider the time slice of this uh, cylinder, uh, we have a boundary and a bulk. And this bulk is the, as I said, it's the anti-dositor. 
which is curved spacetime. So it has some non-trivial geometry. And on the other hand, uh, we have a boundary which is one dimensional lower than the, the bulk. Uh, there, uh, we consider some quantum state in a so-called conformal field theory, uh, which is uh, some type of um, quantum system with a infinite Hilbert, Hilbert space dimensions. So uh, this is just a two independent uh, system. One is a geometry described by uh, ADS spacetime, and the other is uh, some quantum theory, which is known as a conformal field theory, living on one dimensional lower spacetime. And the holography or ADS CFT correspondence says that actually these two gives you an equivalent description. So if you want to study quantum gravity here, uh, we can study from the conformal field theory, uh, which is, well, we know uh, to some extent because uh, quantum gravity is something really mysterious to uh, so far to us. But it, on the other hand, this conformal field theory is a kind of, well, like a many body system. So which we know uh, to some extent. Maybe I should ask the naive question right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You say they give similar results. Mm -hmm. We're asking very different questions on two sides, right? You're asking about the geometry of the mm -hmm. specific space, but when you talk about a quantum state and a conformal mm -hmm. field theory, you mean the state of some other fields moving on the surface? Or you mean? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, yes. And uh, what I mean by their equivalent is well, um, okay, so I will explain shortly, actually, uh, maybe one slide after this. So, okay, let me proceed. So, uh, this is the uh, equivalent relation. So, um, we we are in under holography. What we claim here is uh, the partition function for the CFT living on the boundary, and the gravity partition function for the this bulk spacetime are actually equivalent to each other. I mean, equal to each other. And the for the partition function for the CFT side, it is just um usual partition function. It's just some, um, yeah. Well, uh, it's just a summation of uh, both fun factors. Um, but the on the other hand, the gravitational partition function, it's a uh, bottom up factor given by this uh, einstein hilbert action, which describes um, um, Lagrangian for the uh, gravity in general relativity. And we have to sum over all possible geometries. And that gives you a partition function for quantum gravity. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so I'll, I'll just push one, one more time, if you don't mind. For the QFT, though, uh, you must have to assume some specific Lagrangian, some specific mm -hmm. content of fields. Right, so yes. One field, the bosonic field, mm -hmm. matter. Yeah, that's a good point. And actually, the uh, this is very important that, that I restrict to the conformal field theory. So, um, usual, so in under ADA safety correspondence, what we usually consider is uh, some uh, semi-classical uh, geometry versus uh, some uh, strongly coupled quantum field theory. So it's, for example, one of the uh, famous examples is uh, N equals four super young males. And this is a really strongly interacting theory and which, so usually we are, uh, we, we cannot uh, follow entire like Hamiltonian dynamics mm -hmm. generated by this Hamiltonian, but, um, here, um, we consider conformal field theories, which has a conformal symmetry. So actually, um, various kind of quantities are only determined from conformal symmetry, independent of, independent of details of this Lagrangian. So here, uh, I don't really specify the field content, but uh, of course, uh, there are uh, some of the uh, examples of conform conformal field theory. Like I said, for n equals four to point your mass. Thank you for questions. So uh, this is a uh, basically the relation of, uh, under holography, and but th th this is really mysterious summation of a geometry, and I, I, this makes the uh, uh, this makes the uh, the theory quantum gravity because we are summing over all possible geometries, and 
uh, of course, this is a really mysterious thing, and we we don't know how to really sum of uh, all possible geometries. But uh, we can focus on some specific space sign, uh, asymptotically anti dositer space sign. Then uh, under holography, we can say that this uh, the partition function for CFT and allowing a little bit of fluctuations on top of the, on top of CFT. Then it can be described by um, this gravitational um, partition function approximated by the equation motion in general relativity, which is known as Einstein equation. So um, in this sense, we can compute various quantities in conformal field theory from uh, general relativity using some uh, ge geometrical quantities. So this is uh, one figure. So this is a bulk and this is a boundary. So this is just a Minkowski space time. And the conformal field theory is defined on this Minkowski space time. So we can compute partition function, correlation function, and also entanglement entropy as well, I will describe later. And this has some geometrical interpretation in terms of this bulk space sign given by this kind of metric. So uh, this is a, a holography. And uh, uh, in this talk, I will consider various kind of uh, quantum states which has this kind of holographic dual, gravity dual. So here, uh, let me uh, try to describe some of the famous examples of quantum states which has some gravity dual. So in the conformal phase theory, we can consider vacuum, thermal state, and some energy eigenstates. And the vacuum corresponds to the, this kind of geometry, the pure asymp uh, ADS space time. And on the other hand, uh, the thermal state or some uh, energy eigenstates, which is an excited state in conformal field theory, has a dual description uh, away from this pure ADS space time. So since this is thermal or excited state, so it must correspond to some kind of um, excited geometry and thermal, like a containing thermal object or some energetic object in ADS space time. And uh, this is actually described as a black hole. So uh, the vacuum state in CFT corresponds to pure ADS space time and thermal state and excited states are described as black holes. So uh, this is uh, some of the examples of uh, states which has a gravity dual. And oh, uh, well, so one may uh, have a naive question that, okay, so there are two different states. One is thermal state and one is the uh, excited state. One is a mixed state and one is a pure state. But it seems that it corresponds to the same black hole. And this is kind of uh, mysterious. What distinguishes those two? And actually, um, we can distinguish uh, from the geometrical perspective. So first of all, uh, when we consider pure pure state, like this kind of excited state, uh, it sure corresponds to the uh, one single boundary space time, like this. So this is a Penrose diagram. I don't explain in detail, but basically this is a boundary, and this is this describes a black hole space time. And we only have a single boundary, which means we only have a, a single quantum system dual to this uh, geometry. So uh, this basically gives you a black hole space time, which is specified by uh, temperature in terms of energy. And as, uh, here we specify energy for energy eigenstates. So this determines the uh, black hole temperature in terms of Legendre transformation. On the other hand, um, I said the thermal state also corresponds to black hole, and which means uh, it should have some different realization uh, compared to this uh, pure state black hole. And this can be considered using a purification. So the, if you purify the thermal state, adding some auxiliary degrees of freedom, then you can write this uh, purification 
uh, so called sound field double state. Here we have an original uh, quantum system and also the purifying quantum system. So there must exist uh, two boundaries to describe two quantum systems, which means uh, we can extend the previous space time, which only have a single boundary, uh, to a, a second new boundary here. So this is called a maximally extended uh, Penrose diagram. And here, uh, this, so the, this, uh, this corresponds to black hole, but actually it has two boundaries. So this is called two-sided black hole. And so anyway, this sound field double state corresponds to this two-sided black hole. And if you trace out one part, it describes thermal state. And since this is specified by temperature, inverse temperature here, so this corresponds to a canonical black hole because it, we are specifying temperature as we specify temperature here in the thermal state. So um, this is uh, the way we describe black hole in terms of quantum states in, under holography. And um, so uh, this is basically about the uh, state versus space-time correspondence under holography. And in this talk, uh, one very, very important notion uh, from holography is entanglement entropy. I mean, the entanglement entropy is of course defined in quantum information, but uh, under holography, we have a geometrical uh, a way to compute uh, entanglement entropy. And this is known as the real Takanagi formula uh, given by this kind of thing. So uh, suppose, so the, this is an X direction and this is a time slice. So we are interested in, let's say the vacuum state at uh, t equals zero. And uh, we are, let's say we are interested in entanglement entropy between one subsystem A and its complement. Then uh, we can compute the entanglement entropy in CFT, and it turns out to be calculated uh, from the geometrical quantity like this. So it basically tells you entanglement entropy is given by the length of a minimal curve, which is a geodesic connecting the endpoints of this subsystem. And if you divide by 4G Newton, which is just a parameter, um, then it gives you an entanglement entropy. So this is a formula for uh, entanglement entropy, which has a holographic dual. And OK, so um, this is something for pure state. So if we have a, a one subregion and the other subregion, if you consider two subregions, Together, it gives the uh, entire system. This is for pure state. And uh, maybe a decades ago, people ask a, a similar question for mixed states. So let's say we start from pure state, a vacuum state. And if I trace over some of the parts, it gives you some mixed state between A and B. And for mixed state, uh, we can also, we should be also be able to discuss entanglement measure for mixed states. And the question is, what is the geometrical gravity dual for this kind of mixed state entanglement measure? And one naive generalization of uh, holographic entanglement entropy I discuss here is so, okay, so for mixed states, there are two phases. So one is, uh, so this is, a, um, sorry, I forgot to tell you that, but so this is known as the Ryu Takanagi surface and the area uh, enclosed by this Ryu Takanagi surface and the region uh, on the asymptotic boundary is called the entanglement wave. So th there are two phases. One is entanglement with the disconnected. And the other case is, the, the other case is, has an uh, entanglement connected between A and B. So uh, naively, uh, we can interpret this as a, has a no correlation because they can 
are separated geometrically. And before this case, uh, since the entangle wedge is connected, it should have some correlation, non-trivial correlation between A and B. And this is argued to be um, quantified by so-called entangle wedge cross-section. Entangle wedge cross-section is a minimal surface uh, connecting uh, those two, uh, uh, minimal surface separating this connected entangle wedge. So by definition, for this case, it has no entanglement, entangle wedge cross-section. So uh, although this indeed characterizes correlation, so for this case, it had zero correlation, but for this case, it has some finite correlation, uh, which means that the state is not a product state. But actually, uh, it is conjectured to be um, dual to uh, so-called entanglement purification, uh, which contains a classical correlation as well. So this is actually not the um, entanglement correlation, uh, sorry, entanglement measure for mixed states, but still uh, it uh, characterizes some of the uh, correlation between A and B. So this is a um, entanglement wedge cross section and conjecture to be dual to entanglement purification. So, okay, so maybe I, so it, it passed 20 minutes and I hopefully you guys understand what, what, what I mean by holography here. Okay, so if you have any, no more, if you have no questions, let me proceed. Okay, um, so this is basically what we mean by holography. And as I said, uh, the space time, the space connectivity corresponds to some entanglement between two subsystems. So we learned entanglement and geometry are really tied together and under holographic principle. And uh, although I, I won't discuss in detail, but uh, from holography, we are really inspired to consider various kinds of uh, quantum information topics like quantum error correction, uh, Markov recovery, and random unitary dynamics. But um, actually there is a quantum correlation which is uh, different from entanglement. And I, I will discuss that later in detail, but uh, this kind of quantum correlation actually has not been actively discussed in holography. So one na uh, natural question to ask is what, what what roles do they play? And what can we learn from this, this kind of quantum correlation beyond the entanglement in holography? And the other uh, motivation coming from really, uh, well, quantum gravity context. So in general relativity, uh, uh, there is a notion of observer dependence. So um, in the, uh, First, a few slides. I, I said there is a singularity problem in general relativity. Some of, uh, for example, in black hole we have a singularity, and this singularity can be probed for some of the observer. But actually, some, uh, uh, some, some other observers, like staying outside of black hole, cannot really see the singularity inside the black hole. So this kind of uh, singularity breakdown general relativity. It uh, corresponds to some uh, uh, choice of observers. And if I try to interpret this observer dependence in the light of holography, I mean by uh, from the quantum mechanical perspective, then it means uh, there are some, uh, some observer can perform uh, some certain set of measurements and the other observer can uh, perform a certain set of, set of measurements. And this kind of ability of performing various kinds of measurements should be related to the observer dependence here, uh, which distinguishes uh, whether we can see singularity or not. So to uh, study this kind of um, singularity and its dependence of observer, uh, we should really uh, consider some quantity which is sensitive, or, uh, sorry, some quantity which is sensitive to the uh, ability of performing measurements. And to answer those questions, actually, uh, it turns out that quantum discord 
is really a good quantity to look at. So um, to motivate you uh, about quantum discord, uh, let me give you a simple example. So um, this is a two qubit system, and this is a classical correlated state. And this is also uh, given by the uh, summation of a, a product state. So this is classical correlated, separable state, which has no entanglement at all. So um, since this is just described at zero and one, so single Z basis is enough to describe this state. So this has a one-to-one -one correspondence to uh, uh, just a probability distribution. So this is just the same as the, uh, this This is classical. This has nothing, well, it can, it can be described in terms of quantum states, but the, this is a classical state. However, uh, we can add quantum coherence here, uh, making this state superposition of between zero and ones. Then, uh, this state no more uh, described by single Z basis, but we need to consider uh, this kind of superposition. So, but on the other hand, uh, we we still have we this state is still separable because it's a summation of a product states. So, uh, this has no entanglement, but uh, they are not classically correlated due to this quantum coherence. So uh, the question, natural question to ask is, how can we quantify such a kind of quantum correlation even when there is no entanglement at all? So um, to answer this question, um, what we can do is define so-called quantum discord. And uh, maybe I forgot to emphasize here, but for uh, classically correlated state like this, uh, the mutual information, quantum mutual information uh, equals the classical mutual information. But on the other hand, for this state, uh, quantum mutual information not equals to the uh, classical mutual information. So uh, the naive intuition is the difference between quantum mutual information and classical mutual information quantifies this kind of uh, quantum correlation. So um, the quantum discord uh, measurement dependent quantum discord is defined as a difference between the mutual information, uh, two mutual information. And this uh, J pi is um, defined like this one. So this basically tells you the difference uh, between entanglement entropy uh, before and after the measurement. This pi uh, means the uh, measurement on subsystem B. So we have two subsystems A and B, and we consider measurement on B uh, on the with a particular basis, or more specifically, uh, more precisely speaking, we consider some P of EM on B. Then uh, we can define measurement dependent quantum disco based on the measurement on the subsystem B. So this basically tells you um, locally inaccessible information from the measurement on subsystem B. Uh, and if I try to maximize the, uh, sorry, I, I forgot to tell you, but the uh, this JPI is called the uh, inf ozawa Gromboard information gain. So this is basically tells you how much information can you uh, obtain through the measurement. And if I try to maximize the measurement, uh, maximize this information gain over all possible PLVMs on the B, on the subsystem B, then it defines a quantum discord independent of the measurement. So this gives you the quantum correlation between A and B with respect to the measurement on B. Okay, so far so good? Great. So, uh, well, uh, let me give you a, a explicit example so that you can know, indeed, this quantum discord quantifies a, a quantum correlation. So let's consider uh, this kind of probabilistic mixture between classically correlated state versus uh, maximally entangled state. So when the p equals zero, uh, this state is a classically correlated, has zero entanglement and zero quantum correlation. 
And for P equals one, this is a maximally entangled state. So it has no classical correlation. It is uh, maximally quantumly correlated. So this is a, a quantum discord uh, after optimization. This Z actually, Z basis measurement maximizes this quantum discord. Sorry, minimize the quantum discord. So for P equals zero, this is zero as I expected. And this becomes maximum for P equals one as I expected. And this actually equals to the, the value of entanglement entropy. So this interpolates, uh, uh, this indeed represents quantum correlation. And if you consider uh, some uh, random measurement, like if I just consider projecting measurement onto the plus states and minus states. So if I consider the X basis measurement, then actually it gives you very large quantum discord and it has very low information gain. So uh, the measurement cannot be randomly chosen. We, we need to really optimize the quantum discord in order to evaluate the uh, true quantum correlation between A and B. So this uh, is the end of um, introduction to quantum discord. And from now on, uh, using the technique of a holography, I like to evaluate the quantum discord in holography. But there are uh, very various kind of technical difficulties, and hopefully I um, I can show you uh, why there is a kind of technical difficulties and how I can overcome these. First of all, um, quantum field theory is very hard. It's uh, the dimension is infinite. And uh, uh, as I said in quantum discord, uh, we need to optimize over all possible POVMs. And for infinite, infinite dimension, uh, dimensional qubit space. And this is really hard. And actually it's known that quantum discord is, the computation is known to be an NP complete. So, you can easily imagine this is almost uh, not doable at all. So uh, something uh, we can try uh, as a first step is try to consider, uh, try to see if there is any non-trivial bounds on the quantum discord. So uh, toward that goal, I'd like to utilize a holographic duality, especially focusing on ADS3 CFT2 correspondence, which means that bulk is three-dimensional space-time. So if I consider the time slice, it is given by two-dimensional space like this. And the boundary is uh, one plus one-dimensional space-time, which means uh, it's like a circle surrounding the cylinder. So, um, okay, so the, this, uh, uh, again, uh, the, this is the entanglement entropy. Uh, geometrical realization entanglement entropy. And this is a geometrical realization of entanglement purification. Using these notions, actually um, we can obtain an upper bound on the uh, quantum discord in holography. So first of all, um, there is uh, some kind of monogamy relation originated from the so-called Kawashi-Winter relation. Uh, I won't give you the proof, but uh, please trust me that quantum discord is given by, I can be written in terms of entanglement formation, which is defined uh, somewhere around here, yes. So the quantum discord minus conditional entropy, uh, which is determined like this, is given by entanglement formation. That's uh, something proven. And this C is a purifier for the mixer state rho AB. And furthermore, entanglement formation is known to be uh, bounded from above by entanglement purification. And remember, I said entanglement purification has a, a gravity dual geometrical realization in terms of entanglement wedge cross section. So now well, we can uh, give you the upper bound on the quantum discord like this, which I call wedge discord. So this upper bound on quantum discord, which I call wedge discord, 
can be written in terms of the entanglement entropies and also the entanglement wedge cross section, which both have a geometrical realization. So um, uh, this gives you an upper bound in holography. And something really good about this quantity is, well, this has a manifest realization in terms of geometrical quantities. And also um, it, it, ha it involves no optimization. So we can just compute uh, easily. And we, we're gonna compute that and we, we're gonna show you the result for this computation later. But let me try to give you the lower bound on quantum disco as well. And actually, um, it turns out the lower bound also equals to this wedge discord. So, um, as I said, the original definition of quantum discord is like this: mutual information minus the maximized uh, information gain. And the information gain is given by this one. So we need to uh, maximize this quantity. Sorry, uh, since there is a minus sign, so we need to minimize this quantity. And so uh, usually this optimization is really hard, but uh, something you can uh, make a guess. So since J represents information gain, so it means maximize the measurement which maximize the information gain should be something really a very complex measurement. And for black holes, actually we have a kind of intuition. So for black hole, what we, want to know it so the for black hole we can make a various measurement but for example if i try to just measure the uh, energy or temperature of the black hole it is just determined from the classical geometry so this is something we can easily know but something uh, we can uh, uh, something it is very difficult to know through the measurement is uh, the about the information about black hole microstates so the, um, the idea is of, as follows. So even when, even when we, we have a uh, black hole spacetime, uh, there could be a various kind of quantum states realizing uh, similar kind of geometries. One of, the, one of the examples I gave uh, before is thermal state versus energy eigenstate. They are different states, but give you uh, the same semi-classical geometry. So um, some measurement uh, which could be uh, could have very large information gain would be something try to uh, discriminate uh, distinguish uh, the uh, black hole microstates which gives the same geometry. So um, so uh, something uh, we can consider as a candidate for this uh, measurement is a projective measurement distinguishing black hole microstates. And so th this, this, this is a measurement. So this is a measurement uh, try to um, con consider pure state of this energy eigenstates and try to uh, discriminate all the black hole microstates through the measurement. And you, actually this can be evaluated uh, once you are considering so-called so subtle point approximation, which is valid if you take a, a semi-classical limit which means uh, where the general relativity is valid. And we can show that this actually uh, can be given by the single entanglement entropy, but uh, whose state is a kind of representative state, which, which dominates this summation. And this energy is actually given by, so this, um, this is a Sunfield double state case, and let's see, um, so the originally we start from some free double state, so which has some fixed temperature. And this E star is a, a state with a certain energy. And this energy turns out to be a energy obtained from the uh, temperature given from some free double state through the Legendre transformation. So actually we know that what's the energy here. So, uh, after all, all we need to compute is entanglement entropy for uh, this kind of pure state. But actually there is a one more subtlety here. Um, as I said, we, we need to consider 
uh, maximize the information gain, which means minimizing this quantity, which means minimizing this entanglement entropy. And actually specifying the energy, it's not really sufficient to find a minimize, uh, min to complete this minimization. This is because um, even if we specify the energy, uh, I, um, I won't go in details, but it is known that uh, uh, quant uh, the geometry describing this certain energy state uh, could have some singular behavior around this um, ar around this horizon. So this horizon might give you some uh, various kind of contributions to entanglement entropy. So this is actually not uh, different from the state to state. However, the minimization is actually uh, easy. Even if we have a various kind of, uh, even if we have a variety of uh, possibilities that I we have some kind of contribution to entanglement entropy from the horizon, but minimization can be achieved uh, by neglecting those kind of contributions because these contributions are, uh, just gives you a contribution to ent uh, interformal entanglement entropy. And you know entanglement entropy is not negative. So the minima minimization can be achieved by just set those contributions to zero. However, uh, it is not guaranteed that this kind of state really dominates the summation here. So which means uh, we only get the lower bound on the quantum discord. And this, uh, this quantity, for example, this is one of the case. So uh, before the measurement, we let's say entanglement entropy is computed like this, but uh, after the measurement, uh, this can attach to the this horizon. So uh, this no longer computes entanglement entropy, but this is smaller than the, this one. So uh, this is um, one of the case uh, computing this one. And it turns out to be this actually uh, is equivalent to the uh, entangled wedge cross section between A and its purifier C. So uh, after all, um, what I would like to uh, emphasize here is the upper bound is, as I said, it's given by the wedge discourse. And the lower bound, it can be shown here, uh, is a lower bound is also given by the wedge discourse. Since the upper bound and lower bound here uh, coincide each other, so which means the discourse is given by the uh, wedge discourse. And actually, um, I'm not sure whether what, what's the uh, really what's the implication here, but the um, this uh, d equals to dw implies that the entanglement purification actually uh, equals to entanglement formation to the leading order. And so um, uh, I, I guess there are some um, uh, quantum information theorists here. So uh, hopefully. Um, if anybody knows what's the implication here, uh, I'd like to hear from you. Anyway, uh, so there the, is, um, so uh, anyway, the quantum discord in holography is given by the switch discord. Okay, so, um, okay, I still have some time. Um, let me proceed to uh, describe what kind of properties and behavior this switch discord, a uh, quantum discord in holography have. So there are various kind of uh, properties. But first of all, uh, let me describe that there are some uh, satisfactory properties uh, uh, where the quantum disk will have. So for example, if I consider a tripartite entangled state, so-called GHZ state, then if we consider any two parties from these three parties, uh, the quantum disk will vanishes. So the, uh, this is kind of sensitive to some class of uh, tripartite entanglement. And also if the quantum disk is zero, which means cor quantum correlation is zero. So which means uh, the state is separable, but actually converse is not always true. Even if the state is separable, has no entanglement, this goal can be non-zero, as I said in the uh, beginning. And also uh, the disk is bounded uh, 
uh, this is uh, non-negative and also bounded from above by mutual information. And this is really satisfactory because usually we uh, we expect that uh, quantum, quantum correlation is bounded from above by total correlation, which is characterized by mutual information. And finally, uh, when the state is pure, uh, this, this score equals the entanglement entropy. That's also a good property because it re issue represents a quantum correlation. And finally, um, for holographic system, actually I can show that which discord um, has more desirable properties. In, for under holography, actually one can show that the zero discord means the state is separable. It's if and only if relation. So actually this discord can be also um, um, useful as an entanglement witness. And fine, and also uh, in, we can, one can show that there is no GHZ entanglement in holography. That's one uh, application of this quantum discord. And there are several uh, uh, additional properties like uh, this is non-monogamous, non -mon 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 and which is actually equivalent to the uh, non-negativity of this Markov gap, uh, which I will explain this Markov gap later. And also this can be shown to be uh, 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 greater than or equal to one half of mutual information. Okay, so th this is, there are several properties. And uh, let me give you uh, more concrete examples. So um, here I consider two setups. One is Stanfield double state. So we consider measuring uh, one side of the two-sided black hole. And we consider uh, a subsystem A as a length L subsystem on the other hand, on the other side. And also we consider uh, some two intervals, A and B, whose lengths are equal, given by B minus A. And this is basically the uh, figure. Um, so uh, let me briefly explain uh, uh, the, some interesting feature. So this is uh, the horizontal axis is the size of the uh, subregion A. And this uh, dashed line, like here, this shows a mutual information. And the quantum discord, uh, sorry, it's really difficult to see, but the quantum discord goes something like this. So this is always bounded by this mutual information. And also uh, the entangled wedge cross-section, I said this uh, quantified some kind of quantum correlation. Actually, this is not really a good correlation measure because uh, it can exceed mutual information. So there is some kind of overcounting, but uh, there is no uh, uh, this kind of discontinuity for quantum discord and it eventually saturates at some point. This is uh, entanglement entropy. And also this is always bounded from below by one half of mutual information. And this is for the vacuum interval case. Um, basically the, uh, it has a similar um, uh, behavior. So I want to explain further. Okay, so, um, so these are uh, some computations uh, for quantum discord in holography. So uh, uh, this can be, uh, the quantum discord in holography can be described uh, using a linear combination of some geometric quantities and which involves no optimization. And we sh I show that the lower bound and upper bound matches together. So there is no actually optimization really needed. And here from now on, um, I, in the beginning, I said that there, there is a quantum correlation which is uh, different from entanglement. So something I'm interested in here is, is there any non-entanglement quantum correlation in holography? And also um, the, this, this kind of definition of uh, this kind of, um, um, this kind of expression of quantum disco in holography might tell you something uh, beyond the holographic regime. And so here I'd like to discuss a two qubit mixer state. 
and show you some uh, relation uh, to a Mark, so called Markov gap. Okay, so, um, so uh, what is the non entanglement quantum correlation? So I, I said that the quantum uh, quantum discord quantity has quantum correlations in general. So in order to define non-entanglement quantum correlation, one must uh, subtract uh, entanglement from the quantum discord. And so far, uh, uh, please tell me uh, if there is any uh, better measures for quantum entanglement, but. Uh, so far, I know that uh, so-called squash entanglement uh, defined like this uh, gives you uh, the uh, best entanglement measure. So uh, here, I'd like to consider this quantity, the wedge discord, uh, quantum discord in holography minus squash entanglement. And uh, it has been discussed in various papers that uh, quantum sorry, uh, squash entanglement in holography is given by one half of Mitchell information. So um, we can consider the quantum discord, uh, which is given in terms of entanglement entropies and quantum wedge, sorry, entangled wedge cross-section minus one half of Mitchell information. And this turns out to equal to uh, one half of a so-called Markov gap. And this Markov gap is uh, defined as a reflected entropy minus mutual information. And this reflected entropy is, um, sorry, I forgot to put the definition, but the uh, reflected entropy is basically the uh, entanglement entropy for canonical purified state. So like if I have a quantum state rho AB, you can double the Hilbert space just uh, using a choi jamelkowski isomorphism and to consider some purified state. And for that state, we consider it uh, by partition and that defines a reflected entropy. So uh, I don't discuss this uh, detail here, but uh, it has been known that this Markov gap is related to the fidelity or so uh, optimal Markov recovery process. So this is something to do with the fidelity of recovery process. And also, uh, it's related to a tripartite entanglement. But anyway, uh, something I'd like to emphasize here is there is a some, uh, it, it seems there is a some relation between the non entanglement quantum correlation and this kind of uh, Markov gap, which quantifies fidelity or optimal Markov recovery process. But uh, actually, the parties are different. This is for A and B, and this is for A and C, which is a purifier. And uh, maybe I can uh, explain this a little bit. So um, in holography, it has been uh, discussed that this Markov gap is lower bounded from these geometric quantities. So for this A and C, this is, gives you an entangled wedge cross-section. The length gives you an entangled wedge cross-section. But the, here, uh, this number of cross-section boundaries means uh, this the num number of intersections between this one and this edge. So this means uh, here, in this case, we have two. So this is two. So indeed, this is a geometrical quantity. So what's C? Uh, uh, C, oh, sorry, I forgot to uh, explain that, but the uh, C is basically um, uh, the central charge of the CFT. So it is a kind of parameter. No ABC, you're considering a pure C. Rho ABC is a pure state, yes. C is a pure state. Uh, yeah, so the, um, is it possible to write somewhere? Um, wait, let, let me, let me, let's see if I have it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, but the, I think I have some slide. Oh, uh, yeah. So, um, so rho, uh, if I consider rho AB, and we, we can consider canonical purification by doubling the Hilbert space. So the double Hilbert space is described by A, B, A star, B star. And we consider rho A, B, B star, this kind of uh, three-party uh, three mix of states. And on the other hand, we try to estimate 
try to recover this row A, B, B stuff just from row A, B. This is a recovery map. And we try to maximize the fidelity between those two. And this fidelity is basically bounded from above by this so-called Markov gap. So this is a kind uh, representing kind of uh, type of uh, fidel fidelity for type of uh, recovery process on the canonical pair price state. Yeah, I know it's not so, so interesting. So no no yeah. ABP is far, right? Just consider this as like you, you do the canonical purification of uh -huh. ABP and yeah. trace out its far. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm not sure uh, why this is uh, this turns out to be uh, related to the no entanglement quantum correlation. So yeah, that's something I, I don't really understand and I'd like to understand further. Um, okay. Um, so uh, here I basically computed this right-hand side versus uh, this quantity here. And this is indeed lower bounded, but actually for uh, both cases, we can show that this is not really saturated. Uh, this lower bound is not uh, achieved in these cases. And uh, so far we I've discussed only in the holographic systems. And I, I know that the holographic systems are far from uh, the quantum systems we usually see like a free bosons or Gaussian states or some few qubit systems. So is there anything we can learn from this observation uh, applicable for such kind of uh, non-holographic systems? So uh, towards that goal, uh, we need to extend our proposal that is wedge discord to uh, uh, some quantity which can be computed for this kind of non-holographic systems. And there is a, sorry, I forgot the one half, but the, there is a proposal in town which cross section equals the one half of reflected entropy. Now we have a, a definition. So this row one half is a, a canonical, canonical purification of this row AB. And this reflected entropy is a for Neumann entropy for A, A prime. And using this reflected entropy, I can define the which this uh, the so called reflected this reflected this goal like this. And in, for holographic system, this equals the, the which this goal I discussed before. And I computed this for this kind of family of uh, states. So uh, this has a parameter theta, so which superposes the zero and ones, and here uh, you can see that uh, they are separable. So it has no entanglement, but it has uh, some, some kind of quantum discord. Uh, so if I take a theta equals to pi over four, this is something we discussed before. This has some discord, positive discord, but for theta equals zero, this is just product state. So it has no entanglement, no uh, discord, no classical correlation. And for theta equals a pi over two, this is has a correlation, a classical correlation, classical correlation, but um, they have no quantum correlation. So this is a one one good uh, playground to see uh, what what is a quantum discord here. And also, uh, let me emphasize here, since this is a manifestly separable, so we are sure that squash entanglement is zero. So the quantum discord here equals to the non-entanglement quantum correlation. And now uh, I did a numerical, uh, sorry, I did an optimization. Uh, optimization parameter is found to be something like this. And uh, so this chord is something like this. And sorry, please ignore this one. And one half of Markov gap is like this one. And it turns out to be that, that the quantum discord here equals to the Markov gap. So this is uh, different from the uh, something we learned from holography, but 
uh, again, uh, so as I as we see in holography, there seems to be some non-trivial relation uh, between the quantum discord or non-entanglement quantum correlation and a Markov gap between the uh, subsystem A and its purifier. So uh, I actually, um, this is something I want to understand more, but so far I don't have a, a, a explanation from quantum information. This is a kind of surprising result. So uh, uh, this is, uh, before uh, summarizing this, uh, uh, since I have just one minute, so let me try to describe uh, what, what are possible uh, future works. So um, uh, quantum discord had some interpretation as a locally inaccessible information. So like, for example, if I consider EPR state, this e correlation, EPR correlation is inaccessible locally because locally any measurements uh, perceives this as a, just a maximally mixed state. And similar thing happened to actually in this uh, black hole space. -time. So the black hole space time, two-sided black hole is described by a town field double state. It is kind of like an EPR state. And this is actually not traversable. If I try to send a signal from one side, uh, it can't reach the uh, other side, but it just reaches to the singularity, just goes away. And this non-traversability might be related to this, um, to the fact that this state is locally inaccessible at all. So I guess uh, the uh, quantum discord might represent some kind of non-traversability of this black hole space. -time. And the other, for the other work, uh, I, so the quantum discord basically defines quantum correlation with respect to the measurement on the subsystem B. So which means the exchanging A and B uh, gives you a different quantum discord. There is a symmetry. And there is also a kind of asymmetry in the black hole case. So if I consider a correlation between the outside of the black hole and the inside of the black hole, throw, throw the information from outside to the inside, it's easy. Just uh, throw the diary into the black hole. That can be easily done. But try to decode the information of a diary from, the, uh, from outside, is really hard. We need we need a really exponentially complex uh, complex recovery map to decode the information. So I guess this kind of asymmetry of quantum discord might be useful to quantify this kind of one wayness of um, the recovery of information. Okay, so uh, this is a summary of my talk. Uh, here uh, we consider quantum correlation beyond the entanglement. And this can be characterized by quantum discord. And in holography, I show that this is described by uh, these geometrical quantities. And for non-entanglement quantum correlation, I show that this is given by the one half of Markov gap, uh, which is related to some recovery process, a fidelity or recovery process. So th there might be uh, some uh, interesting uh, relation between non-entanglement quantum correlation and this Markov uh, recovery process. And for even for uh, even beyond the holographic system, like two qubit systems, um, there could be a, some kind of this kind of relation uh, connecting uh, quantum disk or non entanglement quantum correlation to this uh, Markov gap. Okay, so that's the end of my talk. Thank you for listening. Sorry. Uh, yes. You.